Previously, I promised you that we'd take a look at the array of Red Giant tools and how to use them in different grading scenarios. But before we do that, we are going to take a short detour to learn a little bit about color management. In today's grading practice, a good understanding of color management is a must. While you don't have to dive as deep as color scientists, having a solid grasp of color management fundamentals can make a world of difference in your workflow. Color management is the bridge between the creative and the technical aspects of your project. It is like the two different sides of the same coin. Color management ensures that the color you are seeing are accurate, consistent, and aligned with your artistic vision, no matter the tools or the devices you are working with. By understanding the basics of color spaces, their transform functions, and as well as various output formats, and by doing so, you can start focusing more on the creative aspect of your project rather than being slowed down with the unnecessary complexities. Whether you are working on a full feature film or just a quick web project, mastering just the minimum effective dose of color management will give you the confidence to unleash your creativity while maintaining the professional results. So when I first started grading, I often find myself working with mixed bag of images. Some of the images are looking great right away on my display monitor, while other images are the professionally shot log images. And those images may look like what we have here. At first glance, they appear flat, lacking in color and contrast due to the logarithmic curve applied by the camera during the capture. This log curve is designed to compress the dynamic range of the scene, allowing the camera sensor to capture as much detail as possible within the file. Later, during the grading process, this image would need to be normalized to make it look like the scene during the capture. Back then, with only minimal knowledge of color management, my instinct was to manually add contrast and color back to the image using the tools that I had at my disposal. My go-to approach was to reach for the lift, gamma, and gain controls to tweak the image until it looked like a good starting point. Once these images are normalized, I can then move on onto the creative side, crafting the look that elevate the story that the filmmakers wanted to tell. I would then apply this look on top of my normalized images. While this process may work well enough for a single clip, imagine the effort required to rinse and repeat this process for hundreds of images in just 30 minutes program. Not only was it time consuming, but it was also less accurate. This workflow is what we typically refer as display referred color grading, where the goal is to make the image look its best on the calibrated reference monitor that we are viewing. While this is a valid method, especially when working with an accurate reference monitor, this process often undermines the goal of color management. Instead of systematically transforming the images from what the camera sensor captures into the color space that our display can fully display, this process relies heavily on manual adjustment, which can lead into inconsistency across images. Having a solid color management understanding in our project is equal to having a solid foundation structure when building a house. Color management is a process of converting colors and controlling its consistency across devices and stages of a project. The goal of color management is to ensure that the colors will look the same from the creation stage to its final output, making it essential for achieving an accurate result. Although color conversion between spaces can be complex, some color management framework like ACES simplify this process by providing standardized color transforms. Artists and colorists don't need to be color scientists to be able to use this system effectively. And it all can easily start by knowing where your image is coming from and where are they going to go next. So here we have some professionally shot images. And you may have worked with this type of images on your grading practice. These images are sample images coming from Sony, Ari, and Blackmagic Design, kindly provided by Vance Burberry, ASC, ACS. When working on a project, you might typically have footage or images coming from various sources, different cameras, video formats, or graphic elements created in design software. Each of these sources can have unique characteristics, such as different color spaces and transfer function, or commonly known as gamma. 
these differences can lead to inconsistency in how the colors appears across your timeline. In our case, here we have different sources that were captured in different color spaces and transfer functions that Sony, Ari, and Blackmagic Camera uses. To achieve consistent results, instead of transforming these different sources into the display space right away, Ideally, we want to transform them into a single unified color space, often referred to as a working space. And from the unified working space, we can then transform our project to a display space, be it Rec. 709 or P3, depends on your project requirements. The intermediate space, or the working space, will serve as a neutral space where all your grading and creative adjustment will take place. The unified working space will ensure that every source matches in terms of color behavior, making your workflow more predictable. And you'll have access to the full range of color information captured by each source. Furthermore, you can also apply creative looks more consistently within this unified working space, without the unexpected shifts in the color or contrast. I'm aware that this process can be overwhelming due to the wide ranges of color spaces, gammas, and formats. But always remember the mantras, know where your images are coming from and where are they going to go next. A standardized color management framework like ACES can come in handy for this scenario. ACES is an industry standard color management system designed to handle every stage of production down to post-production. And if you're curious about the technical details of ACES and you want to explore down to its nuts and bolts, you are in the right place. You can find a lot of classes here at the International Colorist Academy. Today, we are going to do a bit more practical exercise to set up ACES for our project. The easiest way to set up a color management framework like ACES in a software like DaVinci Resolve is through the project settings. We can open the project settings from the file menu and select project settings, or use the shortcut Shift 9. Or we can also simply use the gear icon at the bottom right of the Resolve color page. In the Project Settings window, we want to select the Color Management tab. In the Color Science tab, as we expand the drop-down arrow, we'll see some options for Color Management Framework. DaVinci Resolve has their own powerful Color Management Framework, which is called DaVinci YRGB Color Manage, or commonly known as Resolve Color Management, or RCM. And there are also two flavors of ACES Color Management Framework as well, the ACES CC and ACES CCT. ACES CC and ACES CCT are both intermediary spaces within ACES Color Management Framework, but they differ in how they handle the tonal mapping for the low light regions. ACES CC uses a pure logarithmic curve, which provides a precise but less intuitive response for the darker tones. Meanwhile, ACES CCT introduced a toe similar to a film curve, making it easier for colorists to work with shadows and achieve smoother adjustment in the darker areas. Let's use ACES CCT for this example. And as soon as we select ACES CCT, we see more options available for our color management settings. We want to use the newer versions of ACES, because up until now, the newer version always include an improvement over the older version. We can set the ACES versions to ACES 1.3, and we can leave the ACES AMF field as it is if we don't have the file. ACES AMF, or ACES Metadata File, is a sidecar file written in XML that defines the input and output transforms of the clip. This is particularly useful when we are working in a big project collaborating with many VFX vendors where teams working across different locations or different systems can share the same settings ensuring unified result. For our demonstration purpose, we will leave it as none. Now we can then move on and set the ACES input transform for our project. We know that we have multiple sources in our timeline. Because of that, we will leave this field empty for now or no input transform, and we will define the input transform later on using the individual clips. Now we can simply set the ACES output transform. This is where we inform ACES what kind of output that we are expecting out of our project. This is the space where our files wanted to go as their final destination. So here I can set it to the space which my display can fully display, that is Rec. 709, and watch what will happen as I hit save. And now, as I confirm my color management settings, 
the framework is doing its best to process and transform my images to the output transform that we set previously. In this case, it is Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. Although we did not specify the input transform for our images, the framework is smart enough to detect the metadata embedded in the file to transform it correctly. If we browse through our images, we can see that most of the image files looks nice except for this one image that is coming from Ari Alexa LF. This happened because the Blackmagic image is a raw file, so the framework can transform this file based on the information this file is carrying. Same with the two images coming from the Sony Venice camera. These two images are Sony XOCN and XAVC files, which are advanced codec type that carry metadata information like the camera raw. These two codecs combine the quality and the versatility of raw with easy playback and smaller file compared to the traditional codecs. So ACES can detect the color space this images was captured in and transform that correctly without our input. Meanwhile, the one image coming from Alexa is a normal ProRes file with Ariloxy 3 curve applied to it. This type of file don't carry any metadata information, so the framework won't be able to transform it automatically. In this case, the framework will be needing our input to transform this particular file individually. Here, we can simply right-click and select ACES Input Transform and select the type of color space and lock transfer functions accordingly. In this case, it is Ariloxy 3. And now, the image will be successfully transformed into the working space as well as displayed in the output display space correctly. Furthermore, if we are going to right-click on the three other images that was automatically transformed by the framework, we won't be seeing the ACES input transform from the menu. This is a great indication that the framework has successfully taken care of this file's transformation. And now, if we are going to do anything in these available nodes in Resolve Color page, everything will be processed in one unified working space. So now, if we want to create a look for our project, we can drop in looks in the timeline node to affect the entire images in our timeline, giving our images one cohesive look. Now, since we have set our working space to be in acicicity, we need to set looks to have acicicity as an input and giving out acicicity back as an output. In looks designer interface, we can do that easily by using the in slash out color space and set it to acicicity. When you need a custom settings, you can then open the full color management settings in looks by selecting custom and you'll have the access to the whole complete input and output transforms. By default, looks will always set the output color space to be the same as your input color space. So now let's browse for a preset that works well for our images. Let's set the film grade high contrast from the film emulation category so we can see better the before and the after. I'll hit confirm and we'll be back in Resolve with our look applied to the entire images. So that's it. That's how you can use Red Giant looks inside Color Manage project in DaVinci Resolve. So now let's go to Premiere Pro and let's check how we can set up our color management there. Here, I have some of the clips from Resolve Timeline before. Now, it is time for a little PSA. Please bear in mind, at the time of the recording of this video, the ACES Color Management Framework hasn't fully been implemented in the full release versions of Premiere Pro. And thus, I will be showing you the beta version of Premiere Pro. If you're watching this from the future, then things may be slightly different, but the essence of color management will still be the same. In Premiere Pro, the color management settings can be accessed through the Lumetri color panel. If you don't have Lumetri color panel available, you can access it through the window menu and select Lumetri color. To make things a bit simpler, let's twirl up every option and start revealing individual groups as we go. Let's first open the project group and check what we have there. As we see, here we can only set our graphics white, 3D LUT interpolations, and our fewer gamma. I would leave it as it is. Now, let's head to the sequence settings, and here I'd like to expand the advanced tab as well. Since we want to work in ACES, and since we know that ACES give us a unified working space, we can probably find that option under the working color space menu. And as I expand the drop down arrow from the working color space option, we'll find the ACES CCT option there. So let's choose ACES CCT as our working color space, 
and as we select it, we see that our color setup has changed to custom. Now that we have our working space sorted, we need to know where our image is coming from and where are they going to go next. In this case, we want to set a target output and we can do so by setting our output color space correctly. Like before, let's target the standard SDR output, which is Rec 709. And in this case, it is already set as default, so we can leave it as it is. So now, the only thing that we need to do is to inform the color management framework where is our image coming from, what type of color space and gamma our image have. And to do so, we can expand the source clip group, and we can select to override media color space. And in this case, I'll select Sony S-Log3 as Gamut3.cine, because that was the space and gamma the footage was shot in. So now, I will repeat the process for the other clip as well. So, that's the general idea of setting up ACCCity inside Premiere Pro. Now, if we create an adjustment layer that cover the entire timeline and drop in looks there, we can do similar things like we did previously inside Resolve, creating a cohesive look that covers the entire clips in the timeline. Now, if I start looks, we just need to inform looks that we want to work in ACCCT, and we expect looks to give back ACCCT as an output. This can be done by simply expanding the options in the In Out Color Space drop down and selecting ACCCT. And now, if we use exactly the same presets as before, we will have exactly the same result as what we have previously inside Resolve. So by using a color management framework like ACES, we are effectively manipulating our image prior to their transformation from the camera color space to the display color space. And we are doing so in a unified working color space. And this approach is also commonly known as the Sindrofert color grading workflow. See you in the next video.